circuit today. Were you a bit disappointed then with the performance when all was said and done, considering you know the, the hugely uplifting lead we had coming in from overseas markets? Absolutely, Nadine. We saw an absolutely fantastic performance from the U.S. market on Friday. The ISM manufacturing numbers absolutely blowing expectations out of the water. And in fact, the Australian market had a fantastic open as well. We were gaining about 1% on the open, but by the close, we were only up by 0.4%. There were two main negative impacts for the market today. If we have a look at the intraday graph of the Australian market, this is what it looks like. The first came at 11.30 a.m. You can see that first drop off we saw in the market and that was negative economic data coming out domestically. Retail sales numbers disappointed with a drop of 0.6% when the market was expecting a rise of 0.3% and building approval numbers were down by 7.9% when the market was only expecting to see a drop of half a percent. So that was the negative news at 11.30 and you can see that we saw another sharp drop off at 3pm. Now 3pm is the time when that S&P report came out. S&P saying that they're going to look at the two options that the German and the bank uh, Frank, uh, banks have put French banks have put forward as a, a potential default so uh, I guess the first option is that we see uh, maturing debt rolling over 70% of it rolling over into 30 year bonds with an interest rate of 5.5% plus an extra bit for growth and annual rate of growth that we see in Greece that which will be capped at two and a half percent so it gives an interest rate of between five and a half to eight percent the second option is that we see a rollover of maturing debt 90% of that debt maturing into shorter five-year bonds with the same interest rate conditions S&P saying that both of these will probably qualify as a default now we saw a sharp reaction in terms of the equity markets but wait till you see the reaction in currency markets we have a look at the euro versus the US dollar this is what it looks like 3 p.m. you can see that euro was absolutely smashed and we see the same pattern in the Australian dollar as well a smaller reaction there but then the Australian dollar did see a sharp fall this morning after that negative data closing at 4611 the market was due for a bounce. We saw the low for the year is about 4,451 points. That level has held a couple of times now and it does look like we're looking at a short-term bounce and if we do see this short-term bounce, usually uh, one of the key uh, levels that we look at in terms of a bounce is a 50% retracement level and that would see the first target for the Aussie share market at 4,714 points. However, longer term, we do have a number of macro issues still clouding the horizon. The Greek issue, this is just uh, deferring the issue of a default. Um, so it's just a matter of timing in terms of Greece. So that's going to keep on bubbling away. And then, of course, in the US, we're going to be watching those economic, uh, the economic data coming out very closely, as well as the debt ceiling uh, arguments at the moment uh, in, in uh, looking at the debt ceiling argument, whether we are going to see that debt ceiling rise by the 2nd of August. So we have a look at it in, in terms of US data. One important piece this week is going to be those job numbers, which are out on Friday. Remember May we saw an absolute shocker of a jobs number coming out of the US. 54,000 jobs only being created in the month of May when the market was expecting more than 100,000. If we see another print like that for June, expect the markets to start talking about QE3. Of course last week was the official close of QE2. So these job numbers are really going to feed into expectations about the US economy and potential QE3. So that's what the markets are going to be watching in terms of US data this Friday. This whole Tiger Airways virtual in Australia, Qantas, Jetstar question. Uh, if tar, uh, Tiger Airways does remain grounded, do you think that uh, Virgin Australia or Jetstar stands to benefit the most? Which one? It, it's also interesting considering the timing of it all that we've seen Virgin Australia really pushing in to capture the business market. If we have a look at the airline market here in Australia, what we've seen in the last 12 months is an increase in capacity. So that's led to increase in competition, not only uh, from Tiger, but also from some of the Chinese airlines as well. Of course, it's been a difficult environment. So if Tiger is grounded for a substantial amount of time, it would be good news for both airlines, both Qantas as well as Virgin. But it's probably going to be better news for Virgin, and that was reflected in share price action today. If we have a look at Virgin's share price, it was up by 10.5% while Qantas was up by 6.5%. Both fantastic performances, but Virgin Blue really having a strong day today. And that's really because of the alliance that it's made with Singapore Airlines. Now, Singapore Airlines owns one-third of Tiger Airways. And if we do see trouble looming, then Virgin could be a potential beneficiary of that. So Virgin shareholders having a fantastic day today, up 10.5%.